Australian composer and concert pianist Percy Granger was internationally renowned as a musical genius, but is more often remembered for writing a famous English ditty and for his controversial private life. Granger was determined to leave his mark, building one of the world's only autobiographical museums to showcase his career, celebrating not only his music but also his eccentricity. As the 50th anniversary of his death approaches, his admirers are hoping the reopening of the little-known Melbourne Museum will reignite renewed interest in his work. This report from Lisa Whitehead does contain some images that viewers may find confronting. Composer and pianist Percy Granger is remembered mostly for this ditty he wrote as a Christmas present for his mother. Country Gardens became his signature tune, but it was also a millstone around his neck. So it was really his biggest money spinner, but he absolutely loathed it because it is the, the main piece that everyone knows of Percy Granger, and yet it was only a tiny little nanosecond of his life career. Written in 1918, Country Gardens was only one of the 1,200 works he composed in his lifetime. Ranger devotees, university music lecturer Glenn Riddle and soprano Vivian Hamilton are rehearsing an old British folk song arranged by the artist early last century. Percy Granger was very concerned about preserving ancient musical and old local musical customs. Well, he was uh, particularly interested in the music of the British Isles, the folk songs of the British Isles, um, but he was also interested in the music of uh, Norway, Denmark and uh, Sweden as well, and Iceland. And actually he spoke all of those languages pretty much fluently. Percy Granger also wrote highly original scores, inventing machines to play his free music. But his brilliance as a pianist and his vigorous style was what made him a star. His concert repertoire famously included Grieg's Piano Concerto in A minor. Grieg's great legacy to Granger was... Um, uh, was uh, declaring Granger to be the greatest interpreter that he'd ever heard of this uh, Norwegian music. And it goes something like this. From 1914, Percy Granger based himself in New York and spent years touring, playing to large, adoring crowds. He was even married in front of 20,000 people after one of his concerts at the Hollywood Bowl. He would not have got where he got without being able to play um, the piano brilliantly, but um, I think he had this sort of blonde-haired, slightly rascalish, um, colonial, but still sophisticated charisma. His mother Rose always believed her only child would one day be a great artist, so she began to collect objects to preserve the story of his life. After her death, he continued the obsession. I think he was seeing himself at this stage as, a, um, you know, as the first great Australian composer. He persuaded Melbourne University to let him build and pay for his own museum on a vacant plot of land. Then he shipped out to Australia thousands of his personal items, including concert programs, letters, manuscripts and instruments. People like Joan Sutherland, again, her collection and that of Richard Bonning will go to the National Library. In these later days, there are natural repositories for people's collections. In, in Granger's day, of course, there was not that recourse. The museum included a memorial to his mother, bizarrely displaying the contents of the handbag she was carrying the day she died. The Granger Museum opened in 1938. I mean, it was so well known in the world of music, and yet it's been lurking here almost apologetically on the grounds of Melbourne University, but they have a great world treasure here. Melbourne University recently celebrated the reopening of the museum after a seven-year closure. Granger fans came to see the results of extensive preservation work on the collection and a renovation of the museum. 
even in its modern incarnation, the curators were true to Granger's desire to lay bare all the influences in his life, including his fascination with sadomasochism. He says at certain times in his life that his, um, his art, his music, was inextricably linked with his um, flagellantism and that without one um, and the energies and passions that um, one created, he could not create the other. His lust collection, as he called it, was sealed with an order not to be opened until ten years after his death. His wife was a willing partner in this? Um, in as much as uh, we know that they certainly uh, participated in it, she talks about tiring of it. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, you know, she did buy him a uh, whip for his a wedding present. Interest in Percy Granger's personal peccadilloes has often overshadowed his artistic brilliance. Admirers of his music say that's why he hasn't received the accolades at home he deserves, along with the fact he left Melbourne to study in Europe at the age of 12 and never returned to Australia to live. We have this ambivalent attitude to him, I think, because some, a lot of people feel that he, he basically deserted us. But I suspect he would not have had that unquenchable curiosity and thirst for knowledge and the new if he'd remained in Australia. It would have been stamped out. Vincent Plush hopes the relaunch of the museum will spark a new appreciation of this multifaceted man and his music. Percy has his museum here in, in Melbourne and not a lot else. I want to see a suburb of Canberra named after him. It would be wonderful to have him on a currency and on a stamp and to give Granger his due because, you know, heavens, he is right up there with those people that we do name things after.